of Worship, your source for commentary and discussion on worship, theology, and culture. I'm your host, Dr. Jonathan Michael Jones. Hello and welcome to the Act of Worship podcast. This is Dr. Jonathan Michael Jones and it is great to be here today uh, discussing issues related to worship theology and culture and uh, something I enjoy doing and something that helps me. One of the reasons I do this is for my own personal growth and hopefully um, what I am learning and what I am discussing can help you as well. And so... um, and today is a theological topic and uh, a question that uh, I've discussed before in um, not in great detail, but referenced before. And uh, one that I've had discussions with many people, um, particularly those who are not Christians. And this is a topic that has come up in my discussions with friends of mine who are not Christians, who may be even atheist. Um, and so I'm going to be answering the question. Did Jesus confess his own deity? Um, There are few that deny the existence of Jesus, uh, although there are some, believe it or not. Uh, And even his resurrection, there are very few that deny his resurrection. I think there are more that would deny his resurrection than his existence. Um, Recently, I had someone who denied his resurrection, who just plain out believed that he did not rise from the dead. Although uh, there are countless historical documents and eyewitnesses um, who would refute that claim. Uh, And so there are there are few that would deny his existence and his resurrection, although many have made feeble attempts at doing so. But a common denial, a common denial among lots of people, those who are not Christians and honestly, even some people who profess to be Christians, Uh, which I don't know that this is possible, but there are people who would deny um, that Jesus is not God and that he never made such a claim. And so I counter that argument right there um, that not only is Jesus God, but the prophets, the apostles, and Christ himself suggest otherwise. And so... um, did Jesus confess his deity? Well, yes, but I also want to dig into the prophets and the apostles. So uh, first, it's the prophets who testify to the deity of Christ and his lordship as Messiah. Uh, there's no Old Old Testament prophet that does not testify to Jesus Christ. Jesus himself confessed that the scriptures testify to himself as the Messiah, John 5.39. And it was further understood in the early church that Jesus is indeed the Son of God, and in fact, God himself, according to Acts 10.43. And among Old Testament prophets and figures that detailed the Savior's advent were Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and even Abraham. Um, Isaiah explicitly discusses the Messiah in a way uh, to hope for Israel Uh, during the Babylonian period. Isaiah chapter 53, if you read that chapter, it is a blatant reference to Jesus Christ. And yet, his reference to the servant who will save Israel is prophetic in that it explicitly portrays Jesus Christ and his life-saving death upon the cross. Although Isaiah had to, he was dealing with the Babylonian period in that chapter, this was prophetic because it explicitly portrays Jesus Christ. Christ is often referred to as the word in scripture in the New Testament. In fact, the word logos, which is the word when you read at the beginning of John chapter 1, that the word was with God and the word was God. Uh, The word that is used for word there is logos, and it almost always refers to Jesus Christ in New Testament writings. Uh, John writes that Jesus was with God and and was, was God. The Word was with God, and the Word was God, John chapter 1. And so when it's referring to Word, the Logos, it is referring to Jesus Christ. And so a statement cannot be much more explicit than that. I have often said that Jesus and his righteousness is not derived from the Bible, but the the Bible is derived from him. In other words, Scripture testifies to Christ. He does not testify to Scripture. 
Uh, so scripture conforms around him. So uh, the reason Christ was perfectly in line with scripture is not only that he was obedient. Yes, he was. He became human. He was flesh and he obeyed, but he literally is the word himself. And so from the beginning of the Bible, God's plan of Christ, the Messiah is made evident. God told the serpent in Genesis 3.15 that he would place enmity between him and the woman and that her seed would crush his head. That was sort of prophetic uh, prophetic there. Uh, Women do not have seed. Some translations will say that. Her seed will crush your head. And so from that point forward, the narrative of Scripture reveals Satan's feeble attempts to thwart the plan of God. And time after time, you see uh, the lineage going to Jesus Christ and Satan trying to mess that up. For example, the story of Joseph, his brothers sell him off into slavery. Well, you think, okay, uh, the plan is thwarted. It's messed up. But God took it and turned it to good, made him second in command of Egypt. Here's the thing. When you read that story of Joseph, uh, 13 or so chapters in Genesis, um, Joseph sold into slavery. It, Joseph gets the focus of those chapters. We read that story and, and we read it. The problem is we read it as just a single story in the Bible rather than part of the meta narrative of Scripture. And when you read it, Joseph takes the focus. Everybody thinks this is about Joseph. This is about Joseph because uh, we can learn all these lessons from him. And certainly we can, but that's not, he was, he was the, the majority of the story, but he was not the point of the story. So in this plan that God set out in Genesis 3.15, you look at, read Matthew 1, and it talks about um, the generations, 14 generations from from Adam to Abraham, 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 from David till exile, 14 from exile till Jesus was born. And there's no coincidence there that that it's uh, so um, precise like that. And so um, we think that Joseph is the chosen seed <laughs> to carry on that lineage because he, he takes the, the focus of the story. He is not the chosen seed. He is a chosen seed. In fact, Judah was the point of that story because through Judah's lineage would come the Messiah. And so the entire purpose of Joseph being sold into slavery rising up to second in command of Egypt was to preserve the life of Judah. So Joseph was the primary focus of the story, but he was not the point. And so Satan continuously tried to thwart God's plan. Satan tried to do that and did not succeed. And he never will succeed. And and so the prophets understood that the Messiah would come and they testified to Jesus Christ. The concept here is that all of scripture centers around Christ, even that story of Joseph, because Joseph had to preserve the life of Judah so that Christ would come. Christ has always been the plan. He is Messiah. He is God. And the, the Bible abundantly declares so. So not only do the prophets testify that Jesus is God, the apostles also do so. A clear manifestation of Christ's divine position is the testimony of the apostles. Uh, Throughout the apostolic writings, Jesus is is referenced as equal to God. Peter, for example, he preaches and confesses uh, that they, the apostles, uh, saw Jesus in the resurrected flesh as light from the Father and saw and heard God's glory and voice. That's 2 Peter 1, uh, verses 16 through 17. And so Paul additionally likens Christ to God in his worth and imminent worship by all people because he says one day all will declare him as Lord in Philippians 2, 11. Paul also contends that there is only one God, one Lord, namely Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 8, 6 from whom exist all things, Colossians 1. And so the deity of Christ is no secret in apostolic writings. And so the church for centuries has counted Jesus as one with the Father and the Spirit, and indeed as God himself in the flesh. Um, so we've got the, the prophets, the apostles, but there's also Jesus himself. So the question is, did Jesus ever claim to be God? Yes. And people try to say that he didn't, but he absolutely did. 
Um, C.S. Lewis poses what has become known as the Lewis Trilemma. Jesus is either a liar, he's a lunatic, or he is Lord. And uh, C.S. Lewis, in, in his book, Mere Christianity, uh, writes this, Christianity, if false, is of no importance, and if true, of infinite importance. The only thing it cannot be is moderately important. Throughout John's gospel, Jesus is seen referencing his deity. If you read the book of John, it is replete. And many scholars have missed the message of Jesus' confessions. And so for someone to claim that Jesus never confesses his deity, that he, I mean, he says he is one with the Father. He is absolutely confessing that he is God. Um. And so for someone to claim that Jesus never confesses his deity is to either miss what he has made obvious or blatantly deny it. And John is replete with not only Jesus' admittance to the work which the Father sent him to accomplish, but also his oneness with the Father. John 10.30, for example, and countless others. Jesus himself knew that while he was on earth, while he was on this earth, he knew who he was. He knew And he still knows who he is. He is eternally God, the Son. And this is how the early church concept of the Trinity of three and one sort of came about. And so not only do the prophets, the apostles, and the scriptures testify to Jesus' deity, so also does Jesus himself. He certainly professes his own deity and leaves no room for doubt in any claim that he is he is divine, that he is God. And I'll go even further in saying that the belief in Jesus' godship is an imperative to Christianity. It is imperative. The church has confessed the godship of Christ for centuries. In fact, I contend that doing so is necessary to Christianity. To deny the godship of Jesus is effectively to consider him, the prophets and the apostles, to be liars, Jesus, however, speaks nothing but truth and proclaimed the truth that he is God. And Christianity has affirmed Christ's godship for centuries and needs to continue to do so to believe in this truth, lest believers diminish Christ to a mere human without total power and might. He is God. He is the second person of the Trinity, God the Son. And we must confess and believe that as Christians. I hope this has been helpful as we've discussed Jesus and his confession to his own deity, to his own godship. It is an imperative for Christians to believe, and so hopefully this has been helpful to you today. And so I want to thank you for listening to the Act of Worship podcast. This is Dr. Jonathan Michael Jones. 